I'm not surprised, are you, that the Albanese government's signature housing policy has generated more funding for studies than actual homes. Now, it's a $32 billion program, yet there's nothing much to show for it in terms of a roof over someone's head. But the report writers and the consultants, well, they're making millions. That's because these days nothing seems to happen without first having endless reports and inquiries on which there seems to then find new problems, needing further reports and inquiries before anything can actually get done. Analysis paralysis, that's what I used to call it in government, and it's one of the distinguishing features of modern government. According to exclusive reports in The Australian today, taxpayers have paid out tens of millions of dollars funding planning studies and public servants to look at housing options in key marginal seats and safe labour seats too, without a single home being built. Almost $50 million was approved for councils and state labour governments to hire more planning staff and consultants. Despite warnings that, quote, haphazard Commonwealth funding intended to streamline planning processes, risked duplicating existing plans, stalling already slow processes and delaying new housing stock. And it was uncovered today that most of the money was being pork barreled into key Labor electorates, seats held by the Teals and coalition held seats that Labor wants to get at the next election. So see this for what it is, a billion dollar plan for Labor to try and cling on to power, not a plan for affordable housing. Even in his own seat of Graindler, the Prime Minister's handed over $3 million to the Inner West Council to prepare a precinct master plan for five housing investigation areas. The money is also to procure and implement a new geographic information system. Goodness knows what that is. I'm sure it's probably nice to have it, but none of this will actually get more houses built anytime soon. Indeed, let's be honest, the only housing plan the Prime Minister has is the one that he's managed to pull off for himself, a $4.5 million beach home. If only housing for everyone got as much attention as that. There's no secret to getting more homes built. First, we need faster approval processes, with very few councils currently meeting the standard times for approvals. Second, we need more tradies to actually do the work. Now, preferably, not imported workers, but locally trained young Australians. So let's back off the social pressure for every child to go to university. As that research I brought you last night shows, only 62% of kids starting a degree in this country ever finish it. So if uni isn't really what they want from the outset, then we've got to do more to encourage them into a trade instead. After all, with a trade, you avoid a big hex debt and a whole lot of left-wing indoctrination. So if you work hard, you're likely to end up financially in front in a trade. Third and most important of all, we just need more land released for housing. Now, it's a bizarre fact that modern Australia, a country with more readily available coal and gas and uranium than any other country, has among the world's highest energy prices. And the country with more readily available land has almost the highest housing prices. Along the way, the coalition's super for homes policy will It'll make a difference at the margins, increasing the relative availability of housing to first home buyers. But funding more studies that'll generate plenty of press releases and photo ops, but not a single home, well, that's about as dumb as it gets from a government that seems to have made wasting our money an art form.